I'm Laurie Cochran. I am from the French River, which is up north, north of Perry Sound. And I am very fortunate to be returning to my roots. I've been away for 28 years living in Perth, Australia. So I feel very privileged to be back home with the beautiful Georgian Bay French River scenery. I have been um, enjoying and practicing in the arts for the last 30 years. I'm a painter, a photographer, and just engaging in ceramics. I also have worked a lot in the community art scene. With uh, being in Perth, I was involved with Sculpture by the Sea. That's uh, become quite international. Um, and I was very fortunate to start my art education there at about 30 years old. And then I went on to do some part-time college courses in design, had a successful solo exhibition, and said, oh dear, what do I do now? At which point I decided to apply to the university in a fine art degree at about age 42. Um, got accepted into the Bachelor of Fine Arts at Curtin University which was very different, very exciting, and um, being engaged for three years full-time with an eclectic student body from age 17, which would have been my children's age, up to 70, uh, allowed us to have great diversity. I feel I work in a very naturalistic way, and I use the landscape as my environment. So for instance, I'm blessed that I love swimming, so I'll go down to the ocean, do a great swim. Uh, swimming is meditative, it gets my head clear. I document sometimes when I'm in the landscape, for instance, um, flying with my husband, who was um, at that time doing a lot of navigation. So I would sketch anything to keep me in the now and sort of semi-distracted from other things. So sketching does that for me. Once I get back to my studio, I might think of um, not necessarily the end product, I am a process person. So I'm gonna maybe reference, say, the painting of Ningaloo, which I have behind me. That um, is a large watercolor. Now, I had already been doing classes in watercolor for over 10 years, working very small. I had been in Ningaloo Reef, which is a dynamic uh, UNESCO site um, coral reef and I was in a spotter plane my job was to look for the whale shark uh, so I'm actually looking down and I'm just uh, glancing at that turquoise indigo water and at the time there were no whale sharks which was fine when I got home I went I think it's time to go big and went for it so is it intuitive it is I think knowledge with intu intuition because I had known gravity works with watercolor, the drying time of the paper, it was a rough surface. That was a serendipitous piece in the end, but things just came together. You know, it's just grown. It's grown into um, wearable art. It's um, been my iconic piece for Western Australia. The influences in my art and life, I think, you know, you have to always reference your family because that's sort of your tribe. I'm very fortunate. My husband is an explorer. He's enthusiastic about art and he's a great observer. So I, I, I kind of say thanks to him. When I look back into our family tree, it was absolutely amazing. My grandmother painted, my aunt paints, my sister paints. Um, I'm fortunate my daughter um, paints. Um, so it, it was very much in our DNA, but we might not have had the environment at the time to pursue art. With different art instructors, or more so if you can engage in things like, I worked as a volunteer at the Children's Literature Festival. I got to meet Sean Tan. He's now an Academy Award winner for the short animation film, um, Lost Things. So he's actually a writer of books and illustrator, but he is a painter. I, I didn't realize living in Perth, I was just surrounded with um, so many artists, and because it's a small city, I'm sure that happens in cities all over the world. Having said that, 
it is nice to get back to your own quiet voice, take away all the distraction and sit with your work and just say, hey, you know, be mindful that you're not overly influenced and try to find a style within your own self. What might be integral in my work? I think I really enjoy when something comes together and there's um, a quality of aesthetics, of some sort of beauty, imperfection and beauty. So uh, my pottery might be an example of that. Um, I was just taking pottery with a group of, of professional ladies and they always used to laugh because, you know, they came from a very old school where everything had to be just perfect. And I said, oh, this is wabasabi. This is the Japanese. Things have to be imperfect. I want to really create um, something that has the essence of the place, the essence of the object, and maybe um, a spiritual quality. But what does that mean to you? It might mean something different to someone else. So the rock, that painting actually resonates in a small environment, it vibrates with the uh, granulating lunar black paint, orange, and I just went, oh, I, you know, I feel the energy from that. What is next? I've really enjoyed regrouping. So as I mentioned, I've just transitioned from Perth, Australia, 28 years, to the French River. Um, it's my first time being in the Four Seasons. This winter, I did not worry about my practice. Basically, I got out in the landscape, I snowshoed, I took photos, uh, funny videos that I'm enjoying. As the summer comes, Mapping Pines is back on the, I can't get away from this iconic pine. It's just, it's so ingrained in my psyche, as it is for many people. I mean, you're just, this is the most God bless, please. What role does work play in society? Um, oh, you know, I find art is such an enrichment to our society. Art is uplifting. You see it, especially when you're traveling in different um, cultures. So for, for instance, you might go into a country like India and they're having the smoke ceremony with the colorful smoke. Um, you might go into Mexico and they're doing their flamingo dancing and all the colorful things. So I see art as a role of celebration. Um, I see art as a role of community spirit. For myself in society, I think I, I just love honoring the natural world. My work um, unknowingly uh, wants to be about a sense of hope and joy. It became more known to me as I worked further. That's why you might see Laurie Cochran's Lighthouse Project. That's about markers on the way and hope. So art, for the most part, questions us. It doesn't always have to be, you know, uplifting. It might be political. It might be very sobering, like all the monuments that you've seen throughout the world. It makes us stop. It makes us think.